We, as you know at RHC, have been growing uh, year on year and our mission strategy has evolved with the church and grown organically as we've gone along. We have been very strong at discipleship. In fact, God has been sending many people to us here at RHC. And this is a great platform for us to now be thinking of how we in turn can be sending people beyond the four walls of RHC. Just to remind you, our telos or our vision at RHC is for Asia to be renewed by people, churches and cities being transformed by the gospel of Jesus. And the way we want to think about that and the way we want to apply that and actually do tell us is with an understanding or a strategy of five concentric circles. This is an order of priority and I want you to note that these circles overlap as well and build on each other. Number one, and the most important to us, is domestic evangelism, reaching Singapore and Singaporeans with the gospel of Jesus. Number two is church planting. We want to be a church that plants churches. Number three is church partnerships. This is supporting the churches that we are in partnership or are in a network with. Number four is movement allies. This is being part of a broad gospel movement right here in Singapore, supporting other churches and bringing the gospel to the breadth of Singapore society. And number five is what we call kingdom blessing. This is getting behind great kingdom projects on a case-by-case -case basis. One of the best ways to understand the five concentric circles is if we remember back to the book of Acts. There, the story starts in Jerusalem, where there was great evangelism happening there by the members of the church, as well as by the leaders, the pastors, the people who were proclaiming the gospel from a public stage. But it was also being proclaimed in houses, in living rooms, in dining rooms, uh, in office places. What happens from there is very interesting. In Acts chapter 8, the church actually gets scattered because of the persecution. And it's not the apostles who go, but it's actually the ordinary, regular members of the church who actually find themselves in Samaria, where because they've practiced it at home, domestic evangelism, they start doing it in the new city of Samaria. And before you know it, there's Philip, who is sort of on the bench of the church in Jerusalem, comes to the fore and a church is planted. Another church gets planted in Antioch and there you find Barnabas who was part of the Jerusalem church who brings in Paul and one of the greatest churches in church history is founded at Antioch. Soon what happens and now I'm thinking here of the third concentric circle is the Jerusalem church and the Antioch church form a partnership and they start working together and from there they start planting other churches and going on trips and they start a movement in each of these cities. This is now talking about the fourth concentric circle. And along the way, great kingdom work is also being supported. And these are the idea of five circles all working together. The next question is, how are we going to put feet in action to this vision? Now let's think about domestic evangelism. Evangelism is something that all of us should be doing at RHC. But for some people, they feel this as a burden especially. We want to form a core group where we can identify folks in this category, where we can train and equip you, and then when we can release you as well and provide opportunities and facilitate events that we can be evangelistic. And what about church planting? At RHC, we want a church planting culture, but we need to develop and train and prepare people to actually be a part of a church plant. Now we need to define what a church planter actually is, because most of you are probably thinking a church planter is a male preacher. Of course, for a church plant, you do need a high capacity leader at the tip of the arrow leading the new church plant. But that is not only a church planter. The next tier down, we need ministry heads, good people 
we will be able to run various ministries or departments in the life of the new church, such as worship, such as kids ministry, finance, back office operations, community life, integration, discipleship, training and education, various departments which go into making a church plant successful. But then arguably the most important category of church planter are the 50 mature, servant-hearted folks who go along to support the church plant, who attend Sunday after Sunday, who invite their friends, who are there with a smile and to help and to welcome and to disciple and to evangelize the city of Singapore. We estimate that this might even take a couple of years to prepare and train people and to do a good and thorough job of it. And then finally, to release church planters into the new environment to start a brand new church. For church partnerships, we want to support the Resound Network. Resound is a family of churches that RHC is a part of. It's a family of churches with churches in India and in Japan and Hong Kong and Australia as well. These are our dear brothers and sisters that we feel united with in a network. We want to support them. We want to encourage them in as many ways as we can. We want people from RHC who visit these cities to go and be a source of joy and encouragement to them as well. We want to work with them. We want to help train them and be trained by them and share experiences. But we don't only want to limit our church partnerships to the Resound Network. We are in a strong and good relationship with Nopum and Myanmar, for example, and we want to build on the great and long-standing relationship that we have with him as well. For Movement Allies, we are thinking of the City to City Network here in Singapore that RHC is a part of and spearheads to some extent as well. We want to broaden this. We want as many churches as possible who are gospel-centered to be a part of the gospel movement here in Singapore to lift the name of Jesus high. For our fifth concentric circle, which is Kingdom Blessing, we want to develop guidelines for how we can support and assist the Kingdom projects that are on the go. We want some kind of a framework for how RHC can best partner with other churches and agencies who will fall under the bracket of Kingdom Blessing. Finally, which brings us to the most important question of all, how can you be involved? Well, you can be directly involved in the first three spheres, domestic evangelism, church planting, and supporting our church partners. For domestic evangelism, you can sign up to be a part of the core group. This is the group to remind you of those who have a passion or bear and a special burden for evangelism in Singapore. The second thing you can do is to be a part of the Discovering Christianity courses that we run at RHC. You are welcome and invited to be a part of the training that you can help run and facilitate a Discovering Christianity course. The other thing you can do for domestic evangelism is be involved in being released into the city of running or facilitating some sort of an evangelistic outreach be it in a cafe, or in your office, or in a boardroom, or even in your own lounge. For church planting, if you have a heart or a passion for seeing a new church started in Singapore, we'd love for you to make yourself known so that we can, on an informal basis, start taking together the first couple of steps on the journey towards seeing a new church planted. For our church partners, you can pray for them. Or if you're on business or vacation in one of the cities where the churches are, you can visit and support them and sow encouragement. Or if you are generally interested, come and join us for the monthly missions prayer meeting. Register for the prayer or the other initiatives at the URL provided. Jesus' great commission and telos is to see Asia renewed by people, churches and cities transformed by the gospel. This is your invitation to join him in his work.